Hallelujah. I want to welcome you on board, oh brothers and sisters, my friends, ladies and gentlemen that are joining this live stream all the way from Jesus New Life Ministries, Jenerim Church, Royal Bypass. We are located here uh, opposite Shell Petrol Station near BTL. This is where the uh, bypass uh, touches the road that goes from Royal Town to Kiambu. You are welcome and today it is a live stream. We uh, understand the seasons and we know what is happening but I want to declare even if there is the lockdown we want to thank God because there is grace enough to help us to continue praying and standing in the gap and working together in fellowship. Today, I want to appreciate all of you, members of Generally, friends and members of the Universal Church of Jesus Christ, wherever you are, wherever you could be watching from, I want to welcome you on board as we share the word of God. But I feel it is, there is need to pray together. I would wish we lift our faith together in the name of Jesus. What a wonderful day. This is Easter Sunday. We are saying this is the day that commemorates even the coming out of Christ from the grave. And I am here insisting that it is a season for all of us to come out. Somebody is coming out of some darkness. Somebody is coming out of grave. Somebody is coming out of every sickness in the name of Jesus. We declare we are also coming out of every confusion, complications and contamination of COVID-19. We declare it's our season of coming out. We are not miserable. We are not losers. Somebody lift up your faith even as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father I give you praise. I give you adoration. I honor you God today. I'm lifting my faith to you. I lift my voice. The voice of thanksgiving for the fire you've brought us in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the day that thou have made. For we are alive today. My God, I thank you. And because this is marking the beginning of a new chapter in the name of Jesus. Being the first Sunday of the month of April. My God, I believe. As we always talk of the four object. At the four, the month number four. I declare Jehovah a sign of strength. A sign sign of stability, a sign of protection in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty, it is my prayer that you are going to reach out to your hand of mercy and touch every viewer, touch every listener, touch everyone on board. And I pray God that you visit even our houses, visit us in our homes, visit us Lord in our fellowship in the name of Jesus Christ. I make my God my prayer before you today concerning the nation of Kenya I'm praying God that your hand of mercy shall be stretched over this land in the name of Jesus Christ we are covering the servants of God, we are covering the leaders of this nation we are covering each one of them we are covering families with the blood of Jesus Christ we declare this season, it is gonna be a season of life it is not a season of death we are declaring the masses of God upon the sick that they may receive their healing in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, I also declare the spirit of fear is defeated. The spirit of worry, the spirit of tension. Yes, in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God, let the hope that is in the word of God carry the day. This is my prayer. Even as we share the word of God, may the Holy Spirit lift me up. May the Holy Spirit release revelation and the spirit of wisdom that we may understand the will of God, that we may deepen our roots and the faith you've given us 
into the word of God. Father, we thank you and we bless you. I declare we are blessed and we are favored. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you very much for being tuned to this live stream. And uh, as we share the word of God, I would like you to open your heart and also you open your notebook. You have a pen and write something down. It's important. I keep saying like the Berean church where if anything was preached to them, they used to check into the scriptures. They used to check into the Bible, into the word, into the scroll to confirm that whatever was preached to them was the right thing. It is important to love as scriptures to that degree that you are relating with the word of God every season, every time. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to bring you the topic I'm calling the great benefits of Easter season. The great benefits of Easter season. This is a season and uh, it is important my dear ones to understand that when we talk of a season it comes and goes and then another season begins and it also ends. One of the characteristics of seasons is that seasons are never permanent. Seasons keep changing and uh, this particular one called Easter I want to say this is just but a celebration. It is a commemoration. It is where people are having in mind they remember the death and resurrection of the Savior Jesus Christ. But in whichever um, interval of time, as long as it is mentioned the reason why the season is in place, that reason is what matters. It doesn't matter whether Jesus had died in the month of April or in the month of March or December, whichever month. But the fact that it is him, it is about him, the death and resurrection of the Savior, that is the important thing. And there are benefits. I want to tell you there are benefits of this season. Even today, within our generation people have taken the season to commemorate Easter and to remember the death and the resurrection of Jesus and they have found themselves receiving tangible miracles I'm bringing you on board for the same that don't, don't just say oh yes we know there is Jesus who came lived died and resurrected no it is good to be attached to seasons and especially the seasons of our master Lord Jesus Christ and today as I look at this I want to tell you that it means a lot to remember that this one son of God the son of God who was God who left the kingdom of glory and he came humbling himself as a servant even to the death on the cross why? Because of the intentions of God the Father concerning us. So when you think about him, that he came, and this is the season. Let me tell you, the whole Bible, I have kept saying that the theme of the whole Bible is the salvation of mankind, you and I. And this is important to note that the season of Easter, this season is the climax the climax of the Bible and the word of God is not in the revelation. It's not in the book of revelation. It is actually in these chapters of the gospel. Because this is where the savior, the theme of God in the Bible, salvation of mankind. This is where we see the savior going through the process and touching the rope and coming to the point of sacrifice. Remember Jesus Christ 
is now coming to that moment where we talk of his death and his resurrection. We say this is the climax. It is the core thing of God's will concerning us. Let me look at the benefits that we find. I will look at them from the scriptures. And when you look at Luke chapter number 23, Luke chapter number 23, verse 12, there is a verse that is unique. I want you to see when we are talking of this season, as we remember Jesus being arrested, Jesus taken to the court, tried, Jesus is taken to the cross. As we go through the process, what are some of the things we can learn? Number one, we are looking at Luke chapter 23 and verse 12. This is the benefit I'm calling a reconciliation of relationships. I repeat, a reconciliation of a relationship. The Bible says that very day, Pilate and Herod became friends with each other. For previously, they had been at enmity with each other. It is good to mark the word at that point, that time, that very day, which is this day. The day in record is the day when Pilate tried to convince people that this man has not sinned. And Pilate is trying to, to do all things to see how he should add the case of Jesus without Jesus suffering. And you remember the multitude, the high priest, the religious leaders, they were shouting at the top of their voices that this one is a criminal. This one has gone against Caesar. This one is doing a big city. And they needed him dead. But one time, Pilate decided to see whether this case could be listened to by Herod. When he discovered that Jesus was a Galilean from the region of Galilee which was under the jurisdiction or jurisdiction of Herod. And Pilate decided to send Jesus to the office of Herod that was in Jerusalem. And the Bible records that by that debate between Pilate and Herod, that very day, both of them became friends. There were enemies before for a long time. Now what does it tell you? Look at Jesus. Jesus in the hands of the leaders. The hands of Pilate shifted to the hands of Herod. By that movement, there was friendship reborn. There was reconciliation. What am I saying? These are people, if we are thinking in the human term, we would see Herod and Pilate as the enemies of Jesus because they are trying him. They are not seeing that he is a clean man, but in the process, they became friends. I want to declare it doesn't matter, but one thing I have known is that Jesus Christ, whichever hands he lads at, there is relationship healed. We see that Herod and Pilate became friends. That is a positive thing. That is a good thing. The two enemies are agreeing. And they are becoming friends from that day. And agreeing to move on together. Simply because there is Jesus who is being tried. I want to tell you Jesus even at the lowest moment is able to release and even to bring even that healing of relationship. I want to declare today in the name of Jesus may relationships be healed. May people at home agree. May husbands and wives agree. 
This is my confession in the name of Jesus Christ that if Herod and Pilate agreed and became friends again, I declare even the dead relationship shall come back to life. May children relate to war with their parents. I declare to your home right now in the name of Jesus. May in-laws agree with you. May there be healing of relationship. This is a benefit that we need to carry home. This is a take home that we can all find our relationships reconciled. Remember the major reconciliation is between God and his people. And Jesus came that even in the moment of disagreement about him, is he to die or is he to live? Do we release him or do we arrest him? At that moment of major disagreement and tension, the Lord released agreement and friendship. That is one reconciliation of relationships. May it be your portion today in the name of Jesus. Let's look at number two. I'm looking at the great benefits of Easter seasons. This season is wonderful. Number two, you find it is the forgiveness of our sins. Forgiveness of our sins. Listen to me, my listeners my viewer when we talk of the easter season the major message is on forgiveness you see it even when jesus is on the cross saying forgive them for they know not what they are doing he's talking about our forgiveness let me remind you that jesus was not crucified in a church sanctuary between two cardinals no, Jesus was crucified. Yes, at the junction of the road between two thieves because his message was the message to forgive, forgiving sinners. Jesus was not crucified between two holy men, but between two thieves. And it's good to understand it was organized it was orchestrated by heaven and the things may move that way so that the world may know look at this he is being crucified on at the junction one road going to damascus another one is entering a jerusalem city and at that junction he is crucified and that's why on the cross of Jesus, it was written in the three major languages that were spoken there. In Hebrew, in Aramaic, and uh, even in Greek. Uh, because everybody needed to read and see. Uh, this is the king of the Jews. And you remember even after Pilate wrote that, people said, why have you written that he is the king of the Jews? He should have written something different. But he said, what I have written, I have written. And it remained. Why am I saying this is because this is where the main and the real altar was raised. At the place of crucifixion. That place, the place of the skull. That place of the junction. That is where the real altar was raised and the Lamb of God was sacrificed for the forgiveness of sins. I'm so delighted because this morning after I was through with my radio program, I thank God for the young man who called me and said your message has touched me and I feel I want to rectify my life. I want to be with Jesus. And I remember praying with him and he gave his life to Jesus. I want to tell you today, as we talk of uh, this Easter season, it is your season to receive your forgiveness of sin. You need to surrender to him. The reason why he was raised at Calvary is that you may draw back to him. That he may draw you back to God. And this is his will.
Remember forgiveness. Forgiveness of sin is the main thing. If you look at Luke chapter number 15, verse 1 and 2, I'm emphasizing that Jesus was with the sinners. He was crucified between two thieves. Look at what they had said even before he died when he was alive on earth. Verse 1 and 2 in Luke chapter number 15. The Bible says, Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. Look at those people. They are sinners. They are coming to him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. Look at that. The Pharisees, the scribes, those who pretended to be the best, to be good, they knew the law. And they complained that this man, Jesus, is with the sinners. This man receives sinners and eats with them. I want to declare that is one quality of Jesus Christ. Just as he is, Jesus receives sinners and dines with them. I repeat, this man receives sinners. Wherever you could be lost in sin, I want to tell you there is a man, Jesus Christ, he receives sinners. You may have been rejected by your denomination. You may have been rejected by your village. Maybe even your chief has registered you as outcast, as a criminal. But I'm here telling you there is a man who receives the sinners. And not only that, he dines with them. He fellowships with them. It is him who received even Zacchaeus who was trying to climb the tree. And Jesus receives the sinners. Yes, you may be rejected by nature. You may be rejected by your own self. You may have concluded that you are totally lost. But there is one who receives you. That's why you find even the psalmist saying that even when I'm rejected when I'm disowned when I am discarded by my father and by my mother the Lord shall receive me there is one who is in place and in this season of Easter we are seeing one major benefit forgiveness of our sins when he receives us we are forgiven I want you to see when they complained that Jesus is receiving sinners. Jesus had one response to give. He said that the healthy people do not need a doctor. It is the sick who need a doctor. And that's what Jesus meant. That those that fear they are okay. They have no sin. They have no crime. They don't need the Savior. But those who fear it, they need him. The sick in spirit, they need him. They are meant for him. And I want to say here, do not boast. Don't think. Don't think that all is well. Don't boast about your own righteousness. It is time to humble ourselves and to go on our knees in humility that we may receive this Christ, that he may receive us as well. That's why Hebrews chapter number 9 verse 22, Hebrews chapter number 9 verse 22, we are looking at this, the second great benefit of Easter season, the forgiveness of our sins. Look at this. According and according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. That's powerful. According to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. 
of sin. There is no remission. It is important to know according to the Old Testament. Cleansing was through the blood. There were so many sacrifices given. Including human beings. They had to be purified for one year through the sacrifice of a lamb. And that's why they could take to the high priest. The priest would slaughter for you and then sprinkle the blood of that animal on you and whatever belonged to you. And you could be declared clean for one year. So that immediately one year is over, you get back to the priest for another sacrifice. Everything was cleansed uh, through uh, blood. And that's why you see, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, if you don't identify with the blood that was shed at Calvary, you are never forgiven. Your sins are never forgiven. You may tell me, no, I believe in my religion, and my religion teaches me all this and the other. I want to tell you, this is beyond religion, it's beyond denominations, it is beyond faith and tenet. I want to tell you, this is beyond the imaginations and the doctrine and indoctrination of men. This is about the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed at Calvary. This is the blood that removes sins. Forgiveness of sin is a major benefit of this season. And I want to ask you wherever you are before I go to the third benefit. Please, my friend, consider and reconsider your ways that you may surrender your life, surrender yourself to the altar of Jesus Christ, the altar of salvation. Hallelujah. Oh, this is powerful. This is wonderful. Let's look at benefit number three. I'm bringing to you benefit number three. This is the certainty of our healing. The certainty of our healing. In other words, our healing is certain. Looking at Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5. We are looking at that. It's about the Messiah. Yes, it's about the sacrifice. Look at this. Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5. The Bible says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. This is the Messiah. You remember Isaiah has spoken so much. Most of the chapters of prophet Isaiah is about the Messiah. And especially this time when we look at Jesus Christ uh, crucified. The Bible showing very clearly that he appeared, you know, uh, smitten. He appeared disfigured on the cross. And for sure it is true. He appeared forsaken. And the question that underlies here is, was Jesus really forsaken by the Father? This is a question many people ask. Was he forsaken? Even as he cried on the cross, saying, Father, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Was he really forsaken? I want to answer and say yes. At the very point and at the very moment, where Jesus carried our sins and evils on the cross. Our father who is holy could not look at sin. And at that moment of being forsaken, smitten. It is something you need to see. It was a heavy moment of the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember even by the time he was praying and weeping and sweating blood. And the question he had was, 
am I going through this father and then he is telling God the father if it was your will let me not drink of this cup if it is your will but not as I wish but as your will is and you see it is true it was a heavy it was a burden carrying the sins of mankind was not easy but all this was happening he was wounded for our transgressions yes the blood oozed out of his body the blood was oozing out of his wounded injured hands and feet and the sides why because the blood was to bring our salvation but when you look at the chastisement when you look at the stripes that he received they were painful this is where when we study this beating this flogging that was done by the roman soldiers it was not a simple thing but this whip was having some stripes it was having even the metal tips that were connected with the whip and every time it would be given to a human flesh the flesh was coming out and this is what is happening with Jesus Christ when he is receiving the 40 minus 1 lashes when he is receiving the stripes 40 minus 1 39 of them it is a clear indication because scripturally this is meaningful brothers and sisters when we talk of 39 stripes 40 minus 1 we know the history about it is because the soldiers as they were flogging the criminal they were warned that if you go beyond 40 then you are also going to receive your 40 so the soldiers were very careful after counting up to 39 they would stop there lest they had made a mistake and they used to say let me stop there because if, may, if I may have gone to 40 and I go to 41, I'm going to receive my 40. And because I don't want this punishment, let me stop there. But it is so coincidental that the 39 represent the 39 elements of major sicknesses. When the sicknesses are diagnosed, you'll find the 39 segments of major major diseases and you find that these lashes these stripes that jesus received they match with the healing needed by human beings i want to declare today even as we look at jesus receiving those stripes the bible is categorically true and that through his stripes we are healed by his stripes we are healed the flesh of jesus was tampered with by those stripes by the flogging i want to declare through that we have received the healing and your healing is certain, my brother, my sister. Your healing is certain. I've talked about 39 stripes. I like joining and combining. Even with this time, Jesus in John chapter number 5 is passing through uh, the, the, you know, Jerusalem. And uh, when you find Jesus there, there is a man who was paralyzed and was sick for uh, 38 years. So this time Jesus is coming by. I count it as the 39th year that Jesus is passing by. And the question is asked, man, would you like to be made whole? Let me tell you, Jesus brings a wholeness. There is a wholesomeness of our lives. When you talk of healing from Jesus, it's not just about the healing of that wood. It's not just the healing of that sickness, that malaria, that typhoid, that TB, that COVID you are suffering in. But it's making you whole. 
totally whole, bringing you back to good health, totally whole, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and even physically. That is what he can do. If you look at Luke chapter 22, Luke chapter 22 verse 49 and through 51, it's important to look at that. Luke 22 49 through 51. Look at what healing means with Jesus. The Bible says, when those around him saw what was going to happen, and they say to him, Lord, shall we strike with a sword? Wow. This is the time they are arresting Jesus, and people are surrounding him. Disciples are asking, can we now fight for you? Can we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Look at that. That is Simon Peter who drew his sword and cut the ear of Malchus. Malchus was the servant of the high priest. And Simon Peter cut the ear. And you see that Jesus is being arrested and Peter is fighting for him. Which according to human understanding was very important. But Jesus answered and said, Permit even this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Let's, let's look at verse 50 and 51. Take us back to verse 50. It's important we look at it. And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Look at 51 now. 51, the Bible says, But Jesus answered and said, Permit even this. Is it persistent? Oh, yes. Even this. I look at that word. It's very important. Permit. What did he permit? Look at this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Actually, what Jesus did, he took the ear that was fallen and returned it to the man, Malchus, the servant of the high priest. What does that tell you? Look at the season. It's the season of Easter that we are celebrating. Look at what Jesus is doing. These people are coming to arrest him. I don't think in human terms we can call them friends. But according to the spiritual dimension is that Jesus is out to release a healing. And he is healing even the servant of the high priest who is arresting him. What about Jesus? Jesus is the best friend. Jesus is not like a man. He is not a human being like us. He could have said no. Let him fight it. Let him see it. Let him face the music. Let him cry. Let him feel the pain. Because they are about also to cause me pain. But Jesus healed the servant of the high priest. I want to declare in this season a lot could be happening but Jesus went through it all for our healing. By his stripes we are healed. I want to speak a healing in the name of Jesus. Even as I share this message on the great benefits of Easter season. I'm here announcing healing upon myself, upon you, upon everyone under my voice in the name of Jesus Christ. I am speaking healing through the blood of Jesus, through the stripes of Christ. May you receive your healing in the name of Jesus. You could be down with fever. You could be down with malaria. You could be down with a typhoid. You could be down with all Oh, manner of attacks I declare the healing of God upon your life in the name of Jesus I prophetically announce that we are healed in Jesus name may the nation be healed may the nation of Kenya be healed may the people lie down on in their beds I declare healing in Jesus name 
I'm announcing healing in this season of Easter as we commemorate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. May your healing be certain in the name of Jesus. Yes, you tell me I'm feeling pain. I want to declare right now as I share this message. May every pain pack and go in Jesus name. May your healing come home. May your head be healed. May your headache go in Jesus name. I'm commanding healing upon you my brother, my sister. My friend you are watching. Receive your healing. May every confusion, every uncertainty of your health be sorted out now. Because Jesus went through it for our healing. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Let me go to benefit number four. Benefit number four. I'll take you to Luke chapter 23 verse number 44. Remember we are looking at the benefits the great benefit of Easter season. The fourth one is our spiritual breakthrough. Our spiritual breakthrough. May I remind you my viewers and my listeners, my dear friends, even as we talk of all other things and all other benefits, this is the sweetest of all. Because spiritually you must connect with your creator. And when we talk of spiritual breakthrough, it is the connection of your life. This life and eternity connecting with God. And this is where we have the sweet fellowship with God. This is the spiritual breakthrough. And it's good to let you know that in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, only the high priest could approach the holy of holies. The most holy place. Only the high priest could approach on behalf of the others. It is like nobody else could go there. But we thank God because Jesus Christ became the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. And he became the high priest so that he may go on our behalf that the way may open, the doors may open, the cutting may cut. Look at this. I see the Bible saying in verse 44, Luke chapter number 23. Now it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. That is from midday to 3 p.m. That was the time of darkness. And uh, it is good to elaborate there that when you see the interference with the skies, with the heavenly beings, then you know there is a season of battle. Every time you see darkness coming, even you see the time of Joshua that there was shifting of the sun. And there was the delay. God allowed Joshua to hold the son captive. And the son could not move so that there could be interference in the system. It is because in the battlefield, the spiritual battlefield, there are battles with the forces of darkness, witchcraft and sorcery, which normally consult the stars, the suns and the moon. And when you see there is an interference with our system, it is when the battle becomes tough. And this darkness of three hours from midday to, uh, to, to 3 p.m. Remember all this time Jesus is hanging on the cross. Going through pain. And when it is happening that way, what will happen is... After the end of the three hours by 3 p.m. Look at verse 44. Verse 44. Take us there. We are repeating. Now it was about the sixth hour. And there was darkness over all the earth. Until the ninth hour. Let's go on to 45. Then the sun was darkened. 
and the veil of the temple was torn in two. Look at that. The moment darkness is coming to an end, you'll see the cutting of the temple cutting in two pieces. There was a cutting of the cutting. What does that mean? When you look at this time in the season of Easter, and this time Jesus is on the cross and the cutting is cutting into two. Which is this cutting? It was separating between the holy place and the holy of holies. That means there was a separation between the inner core, the inner circle where the presence of God was meant to be. And this is important to understand that the cutting that is cutting was not a simple cutting. It is estimated by theologians that that cutting was too tough and for it to break or to cut maybe uh, two pairs of horses. Two horses on one side and two horses on the other side pulling the curtain apart. That is the only time that curtain could tear. It means it was so tough. But look at this. Nobody is touching the curtain. But by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, by the time Jesus is going through that pain on the cross, after the darkness of three hours, the cutting cut into two. Verse 46, let's look at it. Verse 46. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Hallelujah. Now, you see Jesus is dying on the cross now. After the cutting is cut, I want to declare in the name of Jesus, even your way of assessing God, your access route to God, your creator, is open. No more waiting for the high priest uh, to go ahead uh, to intercede on behalf of us before God. I want you to know there is an open route. There is an open way through the death of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that those who are far and those who are near, they are brought together uh, through the death of Jesus Christ. After the cutting, cut into two, we have access. This is what I'm calling and the benefit of spiritual breakthrough. We have a spiritual breakthrough. We can afford to break through. We can manage to get through. We can connect with our Father in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare to everybody uh, through the acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, through the washing of the blood of Jesus, you have your root open for you. The road is clear. There is a clear road map for you to associate to fellowship with your father and the creator. Hallelujah. That is what you find in Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. Look at it. We are looking at verse number 19. Remember we are learning. We are studying this on the benefits, the great benefits of Easter season. You see something very important that in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, to enter the holiest, the holy of holies, who through the blood of Jesus, therefore have, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, verse 20, let's move on, by a new and a living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. Look at that. The cutting now is now translated uh, to the body of Christ. So this time Jesus is dying on the cross. 
that flesh, his body, now giving up his spirit. Now the curtain cuts into two. Meaning, this is his body through which we are able to seek God. We are able to penetrate. We are able to fellowship with our creator. It is through his body. And that is why I want to bring to your understanding that body now translates to the church, the body of Jesus Christ. It is through the church of Jesus Christ and through which the intentions of God were that through the body of Christ he may make manifest his manful wisdom even to the powers and principalities of darkness. That is the word of God. I want to tell you today, as we look at this, we see that Jesus' body became the real cutting that was pierced, that was broken into pieces that we may find access to the Father. Verse 21 and says, and having a high priest over the house of God, verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart. Hallelujah. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with the pure water. Hallelujah. Our bodies washed with the pure water. That is the word of God. When you see the pure water in the Bible, that is the word of God. But you see the sprinkling was done. Sprinkling against evil was done by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. This was the 3 p.m. After darkness, this is the time, this is what is happening. That the body is now getting out of life and the cutting is cutting in the temple. Meaning Jesus at this time is giving up his spirit. This is at the same time when Jesus said, it is finished. Remember before giving his spirit up, he said, it is finished. Those power for three words it is finished it has been said many times that this statement was spoken in three dimensions it was spoken in business in trade where economically when people were making deals and they had the deals of business and trade and somebody could say the deal is complete so they used to say it is finished so when they were getting uh, up from their seats uh, to finish the meeting of the deal or the business meeting they could happily say it is finished in other words the deal is over and we are going to enjoy the benefits of the deal we are going to receive profits they used to say it is finished. These are not words of sorrow. They are words of celebration. They are words of celebration. Why? Because Jesus saying it is finished. It was not a season of mourning. It was an indication that so many things have been accomplished. And we're going to start enjoying the benefits that they are in. The deal is finished. And number two, they used to say in the military, in battlefield, when the team is winning the battle, they were coming home with the songs of victory. And the words they could say were, it is finished. In other words, we have won the battle. I want to tell you Christians, remember, ours is the good fight of faith. We call it the good fight. There is no moment a battle can be good if you are losing. It is called a good fight of faith because we are winning. We are winners. And the reason why we are called more than conquerors. It is because the one who conquered is Jesus Christ. He conquered on our behalf. And that's why we say the battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord. Ours 
we fight by faith we hold on to the faith but we are called more than the conqueror because he conquered and we are here reaping the benefit enjoying the fruits of his conquest we are more than conquerors so in the battle we say it is finished because the battle is won and the third way they used these words in the judicial system when there was a case and the people have cased mention has been done and even conviction has been done and everything done and finally somebody has won the case they used to say it is finished in other words the judge could hit the table and say with the hammer up hitting the table that it is finished the cash is over i want to tell you the words it is finished they are words of jubilations they are words of celebration and i want to declare in the name of jesus even after that darkness of three hours we have come to a moment of declaring it is finished in the name of Jesus. I want to speak to your life. That even if you are within the three dark hours. You are coming out of darkness. There is the message of hope. In this Easter season. That it is finished. Your darkness is over. Your battles have been won by Christ. You have victory. I want to declare to you through it all it is finished. May the Lord give us grace. May the Lord enable us to continue holding on to this victory in Jesus name. Benefit number five. Benefit number five. Oh yes, I, I know I'll be through before I close. I would wish to touch on this fifth and the sixth one. Number five we have a benefit I'm calling hope of our eternal life. A hope of our eternal life. Give us Romans chapter number six verse four. Wherever you are open that verse. Let's see this season of Easter as we look at the great benefits. I want you to look at Romans chapter 6 verse 4. The Bible says, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Praise the name of the Lord. What a powerful scripture. I want to tell you, now that we cannot go on the cross and imitate Christ and be crucified like him, what we do by faith is after confessing the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we go through the process and the physical, outward appearance, the outward sign, is our baptism in water. And here I say it is the immersion. It is going through a baptism just like Jesus did it in the river Jordan in much water. You find that in baptism, that is where we connect with the death of Jesus Christ. And the moment we rise up from the water of baptism and start walking in the newness of life, that is the time we identify with eternity. Eternal life does not begin when you die and you are judged and then you are given the crown and you start living in eternity. No. Eternal life begins on earth when we receive this Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us. When you identify with him, you receive him. The Bible says after they repented, then they were baptized. It is after you repent
and you surrender to this life of Jesus Christ then you go through the water baptism you get connected with eternity that is the meaning and you find that by that we also start living and walking in the newness of life I declare we have new life we have new life let me tell you something that the empty tomb is in our statement the empty tomb of Jesus Christ that empty tomb I want to remind you it was an indicator of great great statement that there is a hope of eternity there is a hope of life I want you to see even other graves opening in Matthew chapter 27 Matthew 27 let's look at Matthew 27 verse 51 it's so sweet to see this then behold the veil of the temple was torn in two uh, from top to bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks were split we are back to that point where Jesus is on the cross and the curtain is cutting into two and that time the, there was earthquakes and the Bible says verse 15 and 52 and the graves were opened the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised imagine Jesus is on the cross after he is saying it is finished after the curtain is cutting into two from top to bottom then the earth is quaking and the tombs the graves are opening and the bodies of the saints resurrected it's amazing Jesus is still on the cross but the graves are opening the bodies of the saints mark that not bodies of everyone bodies of the saints resurrection when we talk of eschatology the last days when the trumpet will blow I want you to know not everybody will rise during rapture it is about the dead in Christ the dead in righteousness them that are fallen asleep and the Bible says their bodies resurrected what is happening is important to see verse 53 and coming out of the graves after his resurrection they went into the holy city and appeared to many i don't know what they were doing all this time within friday um the, the friday night the saturday and the Saturday morning during resurrection. I don't know where these resurrected bodies were. But they are, we are told. They appeared after resurrection of Jesus. They appeared in the city. Which city? The city of Jerusalem. They were found around Zion. And the place, the holy mountain, the Jerusalem. The place, the holy place. The new city. I want you to see they were found in the physical city of Jerusalem in Israel, in Palestine. They appeared to many. It is possible there is eternity. It is good to know there is a hope for our eternal life. The moment we are celebrating Easter, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you again, there is hope of our eternity. We are not doomed. We are not left without hope. We are celebrating this season knowing that there is eternal life. If you are left there, if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to surrender yourself to Christ, come to him and get to know there is hope of eternity. That's why John chapter 20 verse 6 and 7. John chapter 20 verse 6 and 7. I like telling you here at Genelim, we like looking at the scriptures. It's good to love the Bible. And when you read it whole, you see the meaning of the word of God. The Bible says in verse number 6, John 20, Then Simon Peter came, uh, following him, 
and he went into the tomb and he saw the linen clothes lying there. This is the time of resurrection. Mary Magdalene has gone to call uh, John and Peter to tell them that the body is not there. The Lord is not in the tomb. And when they came, Simon Peter went in and found it is true that the tomb was empty without the Lord. Look at verse 7. The Bible says, And the heart kerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. This is what Peter saw. I know some of you, you may have followed the theological explanation of this, but it's good to repeat so that you understand that this time Peter saw the linen cloth that Jesus was wearing, or the, 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 the linen cloth that Jesus was covered with uh, to the grave. But there was the hard kerchief that was covering the head was like the head scarf and that head scarf Peter found it well folded it was folded it was not kept in the holy it was folded and kept separate from the other clothes if there was an indication because what they used to do in the Middle East in the time a guest would come to the table to eat the servant used to keep everything in place. There used to be the hard scarf, uh, the, the hard kerchief or the, the, the hard towel. And there used to be the plates and the cutter and everything. And every time the master is eating, of course he is using uh, the hard kerchief. Maybe to wipe his lips. The normal way we use uh, the hard kerchief. And what used to happen is if the master would leave the hard kerchief anyhow, it was an indication that he is through and he is not coming back to the table. But any time the master could fold the hard kerchief, the towel, and fold nicely, strategically, in an organized manner and keep it separate from all the other items the slaves, the servants could come and say okay he is coming back and that is the message the Lord left after folding the hard kerchief and leaving it there he meant I'm coming back and for sure you know he resurrected, he came back, and he is coming back. And that became the message even of the early church. They started telling one another, Maranatha. Maranatha means he is coming back. He is coming back soon. He is coming back soon. That is the message he left behind. And I want to tell you, even today, he may seem to have delayed, but Jesus' return is very soon. He is coming back. I want to declare today, may we wait upon him knowing he is coming back. Let's go to number six, the last one. I'm talking about the great benefits of Easter season. And number six, this is the last one for now. Number six, I'm calling it peace and its power over every fear. I repeat, peace and its power over every fear. John 20, the same chapter 20, verse 19 through 21, number 19 and 20, 21, that is John chapter 20. I want you to look at this benefit number six. The Bible says something here. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, 
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Verse 20. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 21. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Hallelujah. Now look at this. Jesus is coming. The same day evening after resurrection. This is the resurrection Sunday. Remember the Jews are now talking about the body of the man they killed has been stolen. And they are looking for the disciples, the followers of Jesus, wanting to kill them. They were hunting for them. But remember, the disciples, they were inside the house with the doors locked for fear of these Jews. But I thank God because Jesus appeared to them. He just entered. One thing about my master is that he is never held back by boundaries. No wall, no hindrance that can hinder him from coming. He entered their midst and the words were peace be unto you. Peace unto you. I love the words peace. Because why? The words that he spoke of peace. There is power in those words. When Jesus says peace be unto you. He is talking of a powerful dynamic force. To bring them out of every fear. In the name of Jesus. There is peace. And it's good to know. That this peace is the one that will bring them out and enable them to do the work of ministry even after this. When you are covered by all manner of fear, covered by every kind of threat, I want to declare let there be peace upon your life. Let there be peace. Jesus did not come telling them courage. Oh hope, oh grace, oh love. He came with one word, a peace. I want to speak this word to your family, to your life, to your heart. I speak to your economy. I speak to your life. I speak to your children. I speak to your marriage. Let there be peace. Peace has its dynamism. It has its power. Even to bring recovery from every bondage in the name of Jesus. This is peace that made them feel liberty. Even the time he is commissioning them to go and preach the gospel. He is telling them, peace unto you as the father has sent me. I also send you. So even the commissioning of Jesus. It is riding over the word peace. You cannot do anything worthwhile if you are peaceless. I know people are going through a season of threat, a season of fear because of COVID-19. The third wave and even the projected fourth wave. I want to declare to everybody after my voice, we can afford to stand on the platform of peace. We can afford to say yes. With the Christ I will fear no evil. Yes he is my shepherd I cannot fear. Yes his rod and his staff shall preserve me. We can declare that the promises of God preserves our lives. According to Psalms 119 and verse 50. We can declare to say like the psalmist in 118 verse 17. I will not die but I will live to declare the works of God. We can afford to walk on the platform of peace. I declare again to everyone there is peace. From the prince of peace Christ Jesus. He is the one who said be peaceful, cheer up, for the peace I leave unto you 
is not the peace given by the world. Cheer up for I have conquered. I have overcome the world. This is important to know. And this is what I want to close with. Uh, Luke chapter 10 and verse 5. I want to speak this peace to every home. Every house. Allow me wherever you are my friend to enter your house. Luke chapter 10 verse 5. Let's see it there. Luke chapter number 10 and verse 5. The Bible says. But to whatever house you enter. First say. Peace. To this house. But. Whatever house you enter. First say. Peace to this house. As I close this sermon today, I am coming to your house. I am coming to your home through this channel, through this live stream. As you watch on Facebook, as you watch on YouTube, as you follow this sermon, through whichever angle I want to declare. As this word is penetrating into your home, into your house. Jesus has commanded me. That whatever house I enter. I first say. Peace. To this house. I want to speak peace to this house. You are watching me. You are listening. I speak to a peace to the house of your heart. I speak peace to the house of your marriage. I speak peace to the house of your children. The house of your family. The nuclear and the extended family. I come to your house and I announce peace. P-E-A-C-E. A peace to you. A peace to your family. A peace to the work of your hands. This is my prayer for you. And I know as I do this, I'm giving you a moment also to reflect on the word of God. The great benefits of Easter season. Closing with this one. May peace be your portion. As we pray, I want to declare it is time to give. This is a church service online. And I want to request you members, wherever you are, it is time to give. I'm touching my wallet to show you it is a time to give. And we are giving unto the Lord. We can do it through online. We have the online number. And as we do that, 904-904-260 is our MPSA till number. I want to pray with you as we do this. After such a word, I want to believe with you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm in the house of the Lord today. Yes, I may be alone. <clears throat> I may be here alone. But we are reaching you from this desk. Uh, from this altar, from this pulpit, with the benefits of the Easter season. I declare in the name of Jesus that there is the blessings of the Lord. You can connect with the benefits of Easter by raising an altar, by even giving your offering. You can plant a seed. You can pay your tithe. You can give a love offering. You can connect with the word of God. I'm giving you the opportunity because I'm also doing it. I know it is time to give as I follow that. You have the number displayed there. 904260. You can even give towards the project. You can do towards the building project, towards the buying of blood for this ministry. You are free to do what you can we are not stopping ministry we are moving on in the name of Jesus I appreciate you my brother I appreciate you my sister wherever you are remember we are talking about the great benefit 
of Easter season. And as we do this, I declare in the name of Jesus, may your life be blessed. May your life be favored. And of, of all the benefits I've mentioned, may they reach your home. May your house be blessed. Father, I speak a blessing to the giving of your people. And I say to the gesture of generosity that you've put in their hearts, that you bless their lives in the name of Jesus. I've spoken your word on the great benefits of Easter season. Lord, I declare that they shall be our portion. The forgiveness of sins, the reconciliation of our relationships, that I believe the certainty of our healing and it shall be confirmed Lord even the breakthrough of our spiritual lives I declare in the name of Jesus even the benefit of healing and the benefit that we have the hope of eternity and even the peace and its power to break every fear let them be our portion in the name of Jesus. Right now I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that your people are blessed both in the cities and in the countryside. I declare that your people are blessed as they go out and as they come in. I call them favored and blessed everywhere in the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. We bless you and we give you glory. I also cover the members of the body of Christ in the entire world. Them that are watching and them that have not managed to watch us. I pray that you reach out your hand and bless them. Cover them, cover them, cover them. May the blood that was shed at Calvary remain the mark of the insurance. The mark assuring of their safety. We thank you and we bless you. I give you praise and I give you honor. As even as I speak blessing to the nation of Kenya and all the nations that are represented uh, through this watch. And I declare God that you shall remember even the leaders, the kings and the presidents. I pray that you give them grace and help them to lead the nations of Africa and the nations of the world under uh, the lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to thank you all and to appreciate you. Let's keep watching. We'll meet again. We'll be announcing through the wall of Facebook as we continue to modify our programs. And we thank you very much for being a great supporter of this ministry. The Lord bless you. Even as you do that, as you release your offering through 904 uh, to 60, or perhaps my direct line. God bless you. I love you all. May the Lord bless you. Amen and amen. I call you blessed. I call you favored. You are not miserable. Neither are you measurable. No one can measure what God is doing with your life. Surrender yourself, release yourself. And I want to pray with you if you are not born again. This could be your opportunity. And you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Just as I am. I open my heart. Wash my sins away. Write my name in the book of life. From today. I am a new creature and I will serve you. Help me, O oh God. Amen and amen. If you have said that prayer, continue loving the word of God, praying daily for your life and giving your testimony. Don't be silent. Tell others. And may you be connected with the true preacher of the gospel and even a Bible-believing church that you may grow in your faith. God bless you. I love you all. Shalom.